Every day, around the world, 83 million rolls of toilet paper are produced. That simple product we all use daily in our bathrooms is part of a global industry worth billions of dollars, consuming resources equivalent to millions of trees each year. But how does a tree become a soft and absorbent roll of toilet paper? To find out, we enter one of the largest toilet paper factories in the world, located in the United States, to uncover the process. The need to clean oneself after going to the bathroom is as old as humanity itself. In China, as early as the second century AD, the imperial court used sheets of paper for hygienic purposes, though it was a luxury reserved only for the elite. Over time, by the 14th century, toilet paper began to be mass-produced in that country, with records mentioning millions of packages made each year exclusively for the emperor. In the West, the story was different. For centuries, people simply used whatever was at hand, leaves, moss, the great change came with the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, when Joseph Gaiety introduced the first commercial toilet paper in the United States in 1857, sold in packs of flat sheets medicated with aloe. But the perforated roll we know today was patented in 1891 by Seth Wheeler, and its popularity exploded in the 20th century with the advance of modern plumbing and personal hygiene. Today, Toilet paper is an essential item in almost every household, but how is it made in a modern plant? It all begins long before the machines and trucks in the forest. Trees are not cut at random. Species like eucalyptus or pine are chosen as they grow quickly and are cultivated in plantations designed to be sustainable. The cycle is simple. When a tree reaches the right age, between five and 10 years, it is cut down and a new one is planted in its place. This keeps the balance so the forest never disappears. Drones and satellites are used to monitor these plantations, allowing operators to know exactly which trees are ready and which must wait. Interestingly, the younger trees absorb much more carbon dioxide, so the cutting and replanting cycle also helps the environment. In addition, natural corridors are left so that wildlife can move freely. When the time comes for felling, impressive machines called harvesters come into play. They are like giant robots with hydraulic saws and mechanical arms that can process an entire tree in less than a minute. They grab it, cut it, strip the branches and slice it into sections ready for transport. This is not an improvised job. These machines work with digital maps to avoid damaging the terrain more than necessary and they have comfortable cabins for the operators, equipped with systems that reduce vibrations and pressure on the ground thanks to their tracks. Curiously, the straightest and most perfect logs are not used here, since those are reserved for construction or furniture. Instead, the logs with defects or irregular shapes are processed, making the most of every tree. Once cut, the logs travel on special trucks to the processing plant. There begins the first stage of preparation. The bark is removed in a machine that spins the logs against sharp blades. That bark, far from being waste, is reused as fuel for the plant itself or even for gardening. Then, a high pressure washing with powerful water jet removes dirt, stones or insects. Nothing is wasted. The water is recycled, cleaned in sedimentation tanks and, if necessary, treated with ultrasound technology to eliminate stubborn residues. Before moving on to the next stage, each log is scanned with metal detectors and x-rays. Why? because sometimes nails or pieces of wire from old fences remain in forests and a single foreign object could damage the machines. These systems trigger alarms and stop everything if they find something, ensuring the process continues safely. After the initial cleaning, a key moment arrives, turning those logs into small wood chips. This is done with a machine called a chipper, which works like a mechanical monster with rotating blades. Logs are fed through a hopper, and in seconds they come out as pieces of uniform size, almost like little cubes. Size is no minor detail. If they are too big, the pulp will come out uneven. If too small, the process will consume much more energy. That is why factories constantly adjust the blades to achieve the exact size according to the type of wood. Once ready, these chips are separated by large screens that classify the fragments. The finer ones are used for other purposes, such as biomass pellets, 
while the rest are stacked into huge piles outdoors or stored in massive silos. There, they are left to dry a bit to reduce moisture. This is not just about piling up wood. The stacks are carefully monitored, especially their temperature, because if they heat up too much, they could ferment and spoil. But not everything comes from the forest. A very important part comes from recycling, which makes the process much more sustainable. Used paper arrives, compacted in bales from offices, homes and recycling centres. Before entering the system, it goes through an automatic classification. High-speed sensors and cameras separate what is useful from what is not – plastics, metals or cardboard that is too thick. Air jets and artificial intelligence systems are even used to make the separation as precise as possible. This step is crucial because a single impurity could ruin entire tons of pulp. When the material is clean, it enters a giant tank filled with water. There, massive agitators begin to break down the paper until it turns into individual fibres. To make the process easier, enzymes and gentle agents are added to release ink and adhesives without damaging the fibres or using harsh chemicals. Then comes the most curious part, dinking. Air is injected into the water and the bubbles capture the ink particles, which rise as foam and are skimmed off the surface. That collected ink can even be reused as pigment for other products. After that, the recycled pulp goes through a series of washings and centrifuges. At each stage, the filters become finer until they reach membranes that trap microscopic particles. The centrifuges spin at extremely high speeds, separating waste by density and leaving the fibre as clean as possible. All of this is done with closed water circuits to reduce consumption, and the plant has its own treatment system before returning the water to rivers. Compared to virgin pulp, recycled pulp saves about 40% of energy and uses less water. However, Recycled fibres are usually shorter, which can affect the softness of the final paper. Even so, this process is one of the most efficient and responsible ways to reuse a resource that has already passed through our hands. In the next stage, the magic begins to take shape. Both wood pulp and recycled pulp are mixed in different proportions, depending on the quality desired. If we talk about wood pulp, the process starts in enormous digesters, which work like gigantic pressure cookers. There, the wood chips are cooked for hours at high temperatures until the fibres separate and turn into a soft paste. What is remarkable is that nothing is left to chance. Sensors constantly control the heat to avoid damaging the fibres. And best of all, almost all the chemicals used in this process are recovered and reused, reducing waste and allowing many factories to be nearly self-sufficient by generating their own energy with the byproducts. When the pulp is ready, it is time for bleaching. Instead of the aggressive methods of the past, today much safer compounds are used, such as hydrogen peroxide or chlorine dioxide, which remove the yellowish tone without leaving toxic waste. The goal is to achieve a clear, uniform pulp ready to become paper. But before entering the massive forming machine, the pulp is diluted with large amounts of water until only about 1% remains as solid fibres. This creates a light suspension that is easier to process. Imagine a liquid soup of fibres, perfectly mixed and free of bubbles that could ruin the final result. And here we reach the heart of the factory, the paper forming machine, a colossal structure that can measure more than 120 metres in length. It is here where everything begins to take the shape we know. The pulp mixture is poured onto a moving mesh. This metallic belt, vibrating gently, helps the fibres align and interlock, forming an even web. As the pulp moves forward, water begins to drain through the mesh with the help of vacuum systems that suck out the excess liquid. Little by little, that liquid mass turns into a thin, wet sheet that still contains a lot of water but is already recognisable as the beginning of paper. That wet sheet, fresh from the forming mesh, still has too much water. Its next stop is the pressing section. Imagine huge rollers squeezing it gently between absorbent felts, removing much of the moisture until it is reduced by half. These felts are not just simple fabrics. They are renewed, cleaned and kept in perfect condition so the process never stops. The water removed here is not wasted either. It is filtered and reused in the same plant. 
When the sheet becomes stronger, it moves on to the most demanding stage, drying. Here, massive cylinders heated with steam evaporate the remaining water. This step consumes huge amounts of energy. So many factories use their own byproducts to generate the steam they need. Drying is gradual and controlled with sensors, preventing the sheet from cracking. It is at this point where a key detail occurs. Craping. A special blade scrapes the paper off the cylinder, creating microscopic wrinkles that are almost invisible to the eye, but give the paper flexibility, softness, and above all, absorbency. Without this step, the paper would not behave as we know it. It would not be as soft, nor would it break down easily in water, something essential to avoid plumbing problems. The most impressive part is the speed. The machine can produce more than 1,500 metres of paper in a single minute. In the time it takes you to blink, that wet mass has already become a continuous sheet, dry and ready for the final touches. Then the sheet passes through calendars, polished rollers that act like a giant iron, giving it a smooth and uniform finish. At this stage, subtle embossing can also be added, small patterns that not only decorate, but also improve texture and absorbency. Depending on the market, even fragrances can be incorporated for scented versions. Finally, all this work is collected into enormous reels. These rolls can measure several meters wide and weigh tons, so heavy that cranes are needed to move them around the plant. These giant rolls are the raw material that will later be turned into the formats we use every day. Now comes one of the most fascinating parts of the process, turning those enormous industrial reels into the toilet paper rolls we use every day. Imagine a machine that unwinds several reels at the same time, combining their layers to form what we know as plies. For example, if the paper is meant to be two-ply, two bands are overlapped and gently joined with pressure or a light adhesive. Everything is so well automated that sensors correct any irregularity in thickness, maintaining the perfect shape of every roll. Before the sheet is rolled up, the typical patterns we all recognise can be added. Flowers, lines or small embossed designs that identify the brand. This is achieved with inked rollers that apply safe, non-toxic dyes. Then comes a key step, perforation. Here, very fine blades mark lines every few centimetres so that later we can easily tear off each sheet. The calibration is so precise that manual pulling tests are performed, simulating real use to guarantee the sheets separate cleanly without tearing too soon. With the sheet ready, it is time to give it shape. It is rolled around a cardboard tube made separately, using recycled material and designed to break down along with the paper. Many of these even have small logos printed on the inside, a subtle brand detail. The tubes are reinforced to withstand the pressure of rolling, and the machine adjusts the exact tension, tight enough to make the roll compact, but without deforming it. After that, the large rolls are cut into individual sizes. Here, high-speed circular saws come into play, capable of producing dozens of rolls in just seconds. In the most advanced models, laser cutting is even used, leaving sealed and perfect edges. All of this happens at an impressive pace. A single production line can make hundreds of thousands of rolls in a single day. But before packaging, each batch goes through a meticulous inspection. High-speed cameras check in real-time for defects, while laboratories test things like strength, softness and absorbency. Samples are even submerged in agitated water to ensure they dissolve correctly in less than a minute, preventing plumbing issues. Whiteness, biodegradability and even sensory tests with panels of people who evaluate how soft the paper feels are also measured. Once everything is approved, packaging begins. The rolls are grouped into packs wrapped with recyclable plastics, designed to save shelf space and make transport easier. Robots stack them onto pallets, ready for trucks to deliver them to warehouses and supermarkets. Everything is planned, so the paper we use at home arrives clean, safe and in perfect condition. And that is how toilet paper is made. Tell me, what did you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. In the windows that follow, you will find more videos that may catch your attention, so go ahead and check them out. See you next time.